Hello and welcome back to Europe 1100. So we're here at Zagreb once again. Now, the re main reason why is because I actually feel like we're not quite ready to defect away from the Kingdom of Sicily. So what we're actually going to do a little bit more is just try to grind a little bit more renown and try to get um, maybe another fief. I'm not sure whether we're going to be able to because the only fiefs close by are from the Byzantine Empire as well as the Holy Roman Empire. And these are literally massive, massive factions, which I am thinking to myself, oh, we're going to have some issues. Yeah, we're going to have some pretty significant issues fighting against them. As you can see, the Byzantine Empire has huge amounts of different fiefs right here. This is the reason why I'm kind of thinking, well, maybe what we want to do is we might actually want to declare war against the Byzantine Empire and actually attempt to maybe take Belgrade. If we can take Belgrade and maybe... Hmm, maybe this castle here, I'm not sure... I mean, this is all very preliminary thoughts at the moment. I'm not, uh, I don't, I don't really know whether this is going to work out as intended. But anyway, the point is, if we can take this, at least then, if Ancona comes under siege, I don't actually need to worry about it too much. Because I can literally just do whatever, you know, I can just do whatever. And I don't need to worry about losing a particular town because I'm going to have Zagreb and I'm going to have Belgrade available to me. The only problem with this is that we are then going to have to get another governor to be able to help us out, which is not really that big a deal. We do have three caravans running. I, by the way, I renamed one of my children to Borgar because I think that kind of that's kind of nice, you know, a nice little tribute, a dedication to him considering he is no longer with us. And um, yeah, so I basically got another governor, as you can see. She actually used to be one of our caravan people. And uh, I have I have two governors now, obviously. And we're going to need to figure out another one. I actually got another two people. Um, Mengus actually did get defeated, so I had to get him up and running with another caravan. And I also decided to get Bidal running a caravan as well. And I thought, hey, that's going to be great. That's going to be fantastic. Because I, I don't know whether you, you know, I don't know whether you know, but my plan was initially to go for 300 in trade skill. And that is still my plan. I'm still trying to get to 300 trade skill. Don't know whether I'm going to be able to make it, but I am very much hoping that I will be able to. So anyway, we're just going to go for self-made man right here. Minus 50% minus barter penalty for items. Pretty good. And we are also going to um, hopefully get Spring of Gold relatively soon. I personally would like that quite a bit. But apart from that, as I say, I feel like what we should do is try to weaken the Byzantines a little bit while still having the Kingdom of Sicily behind us. Because apart from that, we're going to have to attack things like the Sultanate over here. Um, the Holy Roman Empire has oof, just stretched across the entirety of the map. I don't know whether I've shown you in recent times but this is what they own right now they have literally swept over the entirety of central europe right here going over to france as well they've even taken a couple of things here they even took did they take no that is actually a different one okay th thank goodness i was a bit worried there for a second i thought to myself oh no please don't let them you know all go all the way into spain as well but no no they, they seem to be um stopping around about the uh, sort of French border sort of thing going on. I mean, they took a couple of those. Um, but yeah, they're actually also now besieging London, if you can believe it. They are actually besieging London right now. And so if they take that, that's going to be a pretty significant blow for the British Isles. So not sure how that's going to go, but I can only assume that it's not going to go very well. So that's the point. My main concern right now is expanding our own fiefs, being very selfish about that, and we are also going to be making peace with the Hungarians, because it makes no sense whatsoever for us to continue this. I'm just going to spend as much influence as I can, try to get as much charm skill as possible. There's no need for us to actually be attacking the Hungarians any further. And the Kingdom of Sicily now, all of a sudden, has a combat strength of 4,400. You know, when we joined them, they had about what? What was it? 1300 or something like that they didn't have a huge amount so very nice to see 
we're actually paying the Holy Roman Empire 350 per day, which is not that much, but we're paying them, which is rather amusing in itself. The Byzantines, ooh, we're actually paying them. Are you serious? Okay, we're going to have to do something about this, aren't we? So we have a 59% chance of, uh, of um, support. Well, not 59% chance, but 59% support for attacking the Byzantines. And I'm thinking, yes, we will probably end up doing that in just a second. So let's just do good natured. And uh, oh yeah, this is what's currently going on with my... Um, with my governor here, she's doing a pretty good job. My prosperity is going up relatively nicely. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. What I wanted to do was get to 300 trade, have a massive amount of cash, and then I would actually be able to barter with and buy fiefs directly from vassals. That is actually one of my main things that I would like to do. Uh, I did create a huge amount of tier one swords. As you can see, I created a massive amount of tier one swords just to kind of use up some of my um, some of my materials, and also because this is a really easy way of me just gaining a little bit of extra cash. It's not going to be a massive amount, obviously. I mean, 75k at this point in the game, it's not really that much. It is, it, you know, in the end, when we have that, um, you know, everything has a price. When we have everything has a price, it is literally just going to be. That's not going to be enough to even buy one town. You know, it's not going to be enough to buy one town. So that is a significant, significant um, money sink for us in the future. Anyway, we're just going to be trying to get as many of these guys as we can. There we go. We're just going to be recruiting a whole bunch. And then we're going to be asking people whether they want to go to war against the Byzantine Empire. Oh, they actually said, oh, are you serious that you want to? You have a 23% chance now? You, uh, I can't believe it, to be honest. I really cannot believe it. Oh, uh, well, never mind. Okay, so we're going to have to just wait a little bit of time here. And hopefully in this time, as you can see, my people are going to continuously get me trade skill. I'm very much hoping that we're going to be able to get to 300 trade before long. I'm getting around one skill point every two days which I think is pretty good. I think that seems like a pretty decent progression. Obviously, I am using a mod to provide me with the ability for caravans to give me trade skill because otherwise they usually don't, which I think is an absolute crime. I think in the base game, trade skill should be awarded for um, running caravans. I think that makes the most sense in the world because otherwise it's just going to take an exceptional amount of time. It's going to take so much, so much time that it's just... Um, not very respectful to the player itself. Because uh, for me personally, I, you know, sure, if you want to, you can definitely dedicate your time to doing that. But for me personally, if you don't have a lot of time on your hands and you think, oh, yeah, I'd love to get my trade skill to maximum, it's going to be a harsh, harsh road indeed. And there have been some people in the comments that have told me in the past that they did that in the console version of the game, which obviously doesn't have any mods available to it. And they did it. They did it. And it took them, um, I think, <laughs> I, I'm actually not entirely sure. I can't remember how long it took them now. But as far as I'm aware, it took them an exceptional amount of time. A really, really long period. And so that's kind of the reason why I say, hey, you know what? We need these caravans to actually give trade skill without mods. In my opinion, that would be incredibly useful for uh, the the changes that they're also bringing in in the next patch because obviously I haven't made a video on that just yet. Patch 1.2 obviously has just come out on the beta branch. Uh, I don't think it's come out on the full branch just yet. Obviously I'm not playing on the latest uh, version myself but um, yeah I don't think it has come out yet but uh, as far as I'm aware they have changed how uh, workshops and warehouses and things work. Um, they've actually implemented warehouses and everything so that is obviously going to make a pretty significant difference. Hopefully it's going to provide you trade skill. <laughs> Hopefully it's going to get, give you trade skill for doing that. And um, who knows? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Anyway, we've waited enough time here. Maybe we can actually get... Nope, 22% chance. Okay, so wait a minute. Is there anyone else that they want to fight? Because I'm, I'm okay to change my, uh, my plans if... Oh, they want to fight the Sultanate. Right, okay. They want to fight the Sultanate, sure. I guess we can try it out, eh? We can try it out. So let's do it. Let's uh, start the war here. We're just gonna. I've got so much influence. Why do I have so much influence, by the way? I have no idea why I have so much, but 
there you go. Anyway, we are going to now make our way. Um, I think I, where do I need to go actually? Because I, I think I need to go across the ocean. Obviously, I need to go across the ocean to be able to attack them, of course. But um, yeah, okay, this is going to be a, a bit of an interesting situation because on the one hand, I don't, as I say, I didn't really want to expand my fiefs over in that direction if I could help it. Uh, that doesn't seem like a particularly smart idea, but okay, we'll, 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 we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Maybe I'm going to be able to... Um, I actually don't know. I actually don't know. Uh, I guess we'll see. Where is my ship? Ah, there you go. I actually managed to find my fleet, which was in Ancona. And we've now arrived at a landing area in the Sultanate. So let's exactly see where we need to go next. So let's land our fleet there. Make sure we remember that that is where our fleet is. Because otherwise I'm going to forget it again. That would be pretty terrible. And let's see if I can actually catch up to some of these guys. Yes, indeed I can. There we go. So we can now actually start doing some damage to these fellows. I'm going to take him prisoner. He has a bad personality, so we might as well take him prisoner for the moment. And we're also going to be taking a couple of other people prisoner too. Massive amounts of loot is now being awarded to us, of course, as well, thanks to our wonderful roguery skill. And hopefully we'll be able to uh, maybe do a couple of tasks, a couple of tasks, a couple of sieges here. As you can see, this is a pretty pretty large faction for us to deal with, but very much hoping we'll be able to make something work here. Maybe the Kingdom of Sicily will actually start doing something relatively useful as well. And here we go. Let's attack this guy as well. Uh, oh no, he's also got a bad personality, so I will be taking him prisoner too. We are getting so many high tier units as well. I'm actually very much looking forward to seeing what we can do with that. And we will hopefully be able to take some more even. Wow, look at this. Okay, hello there. There's another one. Yeah, let's continue to do that. And we are at your mercy. Okay, I'll let her go because she doesn't have a bad personality or anything like that. Whoa, these guys are literally super high tier right now. Tier 6 units all over the place. It's actually pretty crazy. And I think... Do you think, do you think I can call for an army? Do you think I can call for an army right now? Or uh, may, maybe I can't, maybe I can. I actually don't know. Maybe I'll be able to. 600 only, 600, okay. Uh, they do have an army at the moment, my people. I mean, I have a huge amount of influence right now, so might as well try to call for an insanely large army. <laughs> insanely large, he says 586. Yeah, not that much, but yeah, okay, fine. So we're just going to call for the army. Let's see. Uh, do they do they not have anything else? Do they do they not have any larger armies? Because it feels to me like their um, their their vassals are not that strong, which is very strange. Because I uh, I would have expected a faction that has around three thousand combat strength to have at least an army that has around two hundred or so, right? But they don't seem to do that. And we've got a... Okay, fine. You know what? We're going to take this castle. We're just going to take the castle straight away here. Because... Ah, there's the army that... Okay, there we go. We lured them out of out of hiding. We lured them. And now, hopefully, we will be able to defeat them, potentially. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to place people in reserve here. Place my trebuchets in reserve. Because I don't have a huge amount of engineering skill. So it's not going to be super fast to create them. But... Um, oh, I literally just cancelled that one, didn't I? Oh, I am an absolute Im idiot. Yes, imbecile, idiot, whatever. Either way, it's applicable, isn't it? it is, yeah, it's very, very applicable right there. Okay, so let's just put these out here. And hopefully they're going to do okay. Could you please destroy some stuff? My engineering is absolutely pitiful. It's really bad, as you can quite clearly tell. It is really, really bad. We were not even able to destroy all of the catapults before three three of our trebuchets were destroyed. Absolutely, I have no idea what's going on with that. Okay, so now we're going to have some issues because I am actually going to run out of food. So that is a big problem. We have just destroyed the walls though, so we should be able to do something here. Maybe we'll be able to capture it and then very quickly move on to the food that we need so that's exactly what we're going to do hopefully we can now speed this up as well and look at this oh yes we can just go straight oh okay i was gonna say we could just go straight on in there i was actually gonna very much hope that i could use my horse inside but uh i approached it from a relatively bad angle 
And now I will be able to... Oh, yes, that was a nice hit. Thank you. And uh, we've got to be a little bit careful here as well. These... Uh, yes, any single time I have the pleasure of fighting against a faction that has primarily javelins and things, it is not a fun time. <laughs> <laughs> that is for sure. Just going to tell my forces just to charge straight on in here because there is no point in not doing that. So we should really make sure that we are okay here. Maybe I can throw a couple of my javelins here as well. And I'm just going to try and see if I can do a bit more damage against the archers. And we seem to be absolutely just destroying them. I mean, there is really no, you know, no, no other way to say it. We are literally just destroying them right now. And that is to be expected, of course. I mean, the, the charge, I think the charge order really makes a huge difference here. Because sometimes the AI does get a little bit too much in its own hesit hesitancy. It just kind of... It, it waits around a bit too much, in my opinion. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. It very much depends on the situation, but forcing them into this, this, this full aggression, this full charge in, really makes a huge difference to how effective they actually are and how, they, how effective they can be. Because this is just a, you know, this is just their, their potential being fully realized here. Because, I mean, just look at how easy and, and quick this was to achieve victory. We barely lost anyone. I barely gained any any renown as well, hilariously enough, because we're just literally not getting that much at all. And um, yeah, otherwise, we can now move on. Hopefully, we're going to get some food. We can only hope that we're going to get some food. Um, we just got a flag, by the way, so I'm just going to be giving this to this guy because increased range damage by 6%. That's pretty nice. And this has now been taken. We did not get any food from that. I am going to be showing mercy here as well, even though that is going to reduce my relation with these various people, but I don't particularly care about that too much. Okay, so I am going to now need to rush. Oh dear. Well, this is not a good look, is it? I'm going to have to go over to the Olive Village, which is not good at all. Uh, Oli olives and their villages and things whenever they're produced is absolutely terrible. I am going to make it there in time, but yeah, you can see here they barely got enough um, for us. How much time do they... Yeah, 12 days actually. What? I must have come over here with barely any food. That was really my bad. Ah, hello. There is a very large army here as well. Okay. Well, this is going to be interesting. Let me see if I can recruit a couple more people here. I wouldn't mind getting some more horse archers. So let's do that. And we've got some more people that have leveled up. There we go. All right. So uh, they obviously want to take this back. Let me see here. I kind of should. Can they can they can they do this? Can they can they do a siege? No, no, they don't want to do a siege. OK, so it's really funny how they always do that kind of thing. The AI, whenever you take a village, they always like, oh, that used to be our village two seconds ago. We must raid it and slaughter all the peasants. You know, <laughs> I always find that quite funny. Anyway, right. let's take them on. Let's take them on. Why not? I feel like we have the ability to win against them. As you can see, we do, or at least we should be able to. 515 against the enemy's 428. And hopefully our troops are going to be much stronger than theirs. And uh, we'll see how we go. All right, so we have an oasis in the center here. We, we do want to try to avoid going into that if we can help it, but we could leverage it a little bit by placing our... Oh, never mind. Um, I know that for, for a fact, my own army has around 50 or so archers, but the, uh, the addition, <laughs> the addition of all my wonderful friends here uh, they have basically made it so that I have pr pretty much zero archers to work with and only cavalry. So, yeah, because they, they generally tend to have a huge amount of cavalry themselves in their own armies. Because, of course, they do. You know, noble units and basically quite a few of the basic troop trees also advance into cavalry. So it makes all the sense in the world that they would have you know, cavalry themselves. So we're just going to actually tell everyone to charge in against this very small wave of cavalry units. 
I'm gonna try and see. Uh, oh, we have. A, oh, yeah. Look at that. We have a bunch of. Okay. We've got some. We've got some infantry. We've got some infantry. So I think that's actually not too bad. But obviously not great. You know, if I could help it, I would much prefer to swap those. You know, I'd like to have many more, um, many more archers in comparison to infantry. Even though infantry can be very, very effective. But for me personally, I I'd, I'd just prefer a little bit more ranged capability but you can see exactly the reason why we have so much cavalry oh my okay this is gonna be quite funny i technically should have um that's the thing before we started this i should have split these in half because what you can do is in the first initial like you know battle setup screen you can organize uh cavalry separations so or or should we say unit separations so if you have too much of, of one particular kind of troop <laughs> in my case pretty obviously cavalry here you could split those in half or you could split those in three pieces and you could put three different formations and you could get everything working out really really nicely for you but for, for me i obviously did not do that because i didn't realize we had so many i definitely should have looked at that before we headed in here but oh well never mind it's not that big a deal because hopefully i'm not going to actually die here i will just try to persuade Uh, I, you know, I was kind of hoping, and this is my, my main deal here, I was kind of hoping that my, my huge wave of cavalry barreling towards the opponent would dissuade them from attacking me. I thought to myself, no, there's no way they're going to attack a singular unit instead of murdering you know, the uh, the cavalry that is inevitably going to absolutely murder them if they don't try to stop them. That's what I was kind of banking on there, but apparently they don't care. Apparently they were just like, no, we must murder Martha. That is the only person that we care about right now. Uh, that is very unfortunate, let's just say that. I was actually very much looking forward to fighting a little bit more, but well, what can you do, eh? What can you do? I guess I should have just been a little bit more careful. Probably should have waited for my own forces to charge in first, but you know me. I do like to go in there. I do like to get stuck in, try to get a little bit of a distraction running as well, because, you know, that can be extremely effective. It's actually kind of surprising how effective it can be at times. Because you may think, oh yeah, distraction, well, how much is that really going to do? But I've seen it in the past. These these kinds of distractions that you can you can do, even if you don't really do too much in the way of damage, and I'm talking about you know hey you know if you do very little damage, maybe let's say that you're not particularly good at the combat in the game, you can still contribute in a particular fight just by distracting the enemy's cavalry, even if you distract 30 of them or 40 of them or even less than that. It's all going to contribute to your overall victory chances. And that's why I've consistently tried to say that, you know, over the course of the last few months at least. Even if I don't actually kill, you know, 30, 50, 60, 100, 1,000 units. Obviously, killing 1,000 units, that is definitely a dragon's job. But let's just say that, in general, let's say I killed one unit, right? Let's say I killed one person in the entire fight. But if I have distracted 100 cavalry or 50 cavalry, that makes much more of an impact than if I were to kill 10. You know what I mean? That's, that's kind of what I'm talking about right there. Because if you can distract the enemy's cavalry from charging your own, then your own cavalry are going to have no distractions themselves and they can just barrel into the enemy's archers and they can just absolutely tear them apart and that's exactly what you want them to do of course that's what they are designed for you know you want your cavalry to just ju just obliterate them that's what you want anyway we're just going to take this guy prisoner and uh, the others were all taken prisoner by the other people so mm hmm what do we want to do yep not much uh, yeah, we will be taking the rest here, and I need to... Well, that was that was pretty easy, actually. Surprisingly easy, in fact. And I'm now wondering... 
they're go they're, they're going to want to um, I think they're going to want to make peace relatively soon but I need to go over here and get some date fruit in my opinion I think I am gonna need the food so yeah the problem is see now this is where also roguery comes in mighty handy this is actually something that you may not think about from a broad perspective you know a lot of people are not going to think about this particular aspect right. of roguery skill because obviously if you think about roguery in general you think okay it's all about raiding villages it's all about getting additional loot during battles and so on you know it's all about those pretty obvious aspects of the of the skill itself but if you think about it a little bit more just just a little bit more you'll you'll realize that roguery is actually really really effective for sneaking in to towns and you can see where i'm going with this if you have a very high roguery skill what you can then do is you can sneak into a town and very very high chances of being able to do that super super high chances of being able to do that and then you can buy all their food oh yeah you can buy all their food and then you can starve them out just that much faster and that is exceptional and that's something that i actually haven't done um, in the past when i've been a roguery character and i have wasted that opportunity and i would have loved to have been able to do that at the time but yeah maybe in the future who knows maybe in the future anyway plus five hit points i guess plus five hit points is what we're going to be going for here and we can now uh, besiege the town they have 12 days worth of food which is well quite a lot actually in the grand scheme of a siege but well we can uh, we can try our best here we're just gonna get a couple of trebuchets up and we're gonna do a little bit better this time around and now that we've um now that we've actually defeated their main armies we should be completely oh uh, one of them actually managed to escape just now which is not exactly great but oh well what can you do hopefully they're not going to come out straight away swinging you know that would not be too nice of them and hopefully just uh yeah we just get to get our trebuchets up and running right now and then hopefully we'll be able to get the walls down they only have seven days worth of food remaining maybe by the time we get the walls down we should we might even be able to start starving them out which would make things much much easier for us mm, no there's five days five five days left i think you know what we're just gonna go straight on in i don't think that there's a particularly good reason for us to delay right Hmm. Now I'm wondering whether that is whether that is a good idea. Hmm. Let's do it. Why not? We have the combat advantage. We have the combat advantage right now. That is pretty much all that I'm really looking at right here. Uh, but they have the they have the they have the numbers, right? Yeah, they have the numbers. I think. So it pro hmm. yeah, maybe it would have been a good idea to delay a little bit. But well, I'm actually in here really fast. This is. Oh, this is amusing. I'm actually really surprised that they're allowing me to do this right now. Well, they can't really do much about that, can they? Oh, yeah, there's a lot of spin. See, this is exactly why I do not like fighting these kinds of factions. Whenever they are consistently just equipped with javelins or miniature spears over and over again, especially their infantry, it is one of the worst things that you can do to come in here on a horse very very difficult to make that work anyway let me see if i can maybe do something here oh i actually need to get off my mount to be able to open the gate of course open it up there we go yes absolutely perfect wonderful they're gonna try to close the uh they're gonna try to how dare you how dare you try to kill my horse well actually you were trying to kill me but yeah well whatever Okay, uh, I'm probably going to die here. Am I? Oh, no, they closed it. Oh, no. Uh, okay, well, maybe I can actually open it up again. And Oh, am I, am I dead? Yeah, I died from a... Did I die from a rock or something like that? I'm actually not entirely sure. Are we losing this, by the way? <laughs> it feels like we're losing this super hard, but... It doesn't seem like... I, I don't know. Maybe we should have... Oh, we should have destroyed this... Um, this catapult here, but they're not even using it. So I guess it's not really that big a deal. Uh, hopefully my forces will be able to absolutely obliterate them, but it seems like they are making things quite difficult for us right now. Huh. Are we even going to be able to... Are we even going to be able to defend? 
Are we, are we going to be able to defend this? They've killed 150 of us. We only have 400. Bear that in mind. Huh. You know what? I'm actually going to retreat. I actually feel like I should retreat here. And we should try, try to just regenerate ourselves a little bit and see what happens. Because maybe... Maybe we are actually, you know, we're just going to continue the siege. We're just going to continue the siege. We're going to get our people back up on their feet. Ah, there's the, there's the army. That fellow just managed to escape us beforehand. This is a problem. Halt. Yeah, he's going to try to attack us once again. But you've got to bear in mind, he literally doesn't have the, the unit quality to be able to make this work. There's no way he's going to be able to do this. But this does give us an opportunity to separate our formations so I can actually finally do that now so as you can see this is what you can do and then you get this little slider bar here and you can then ha see the percentage and so on and you can basically make it so that you can separate your people as you like and I'm probably just going to do it around 60 in each one I don't really care either way and you can even put some people on there if you want to as well so for example I could put Kataminos on there and he's going to be a pretty good commander for that so let's just do that and then we can individually command our cavalry formations. Wow, they have f oh, what? What? Do they have 130. They have 130 cavalry. What is that? That's absolute insanity. Well, we have we have quite a lot as well, to be fair. So, you know, there's uh, maybe not too much to to be too excited about, but still. I'm, uh, I'm kind of surprised. <laughs> kind of surprised. Anyway, I'm going to tell my infantry to charge in right here. I'm going to tell my archers. You know what? I'm going to actually tell them to auto-delegate so that they can skirmish however they so desire. And now that I'm actually distracting these guys, I'm going to tell one part of my cavalry to charge in. Where's my other cavalry? They're all the way over there. So I should probably tell them to charge in too because maybe they can start harassing the enemy's, uh, enemy's archers or something like that. And um, we can hopefully get a really, really good bit of damage really early on here 700 damage from that wow that was insane yeah that was a slashing attack as well that's exactly what i mean about the slashing pole arms though if you get if you literally just get a slow two-handed slashing pole arm pretty much no matter what it is it seems to do insane damage even if it's a terrible one like the one i'm using because that's it's funny because this weapon is broken <laughs> this weapon is broken quality and it's still able to deal massive damage that's just crazy. Anyway, um, yeah, this is this is pretty much done, I'm pretty sure. As you can see, we're getting some nice, nice kills here. And I actually don't even know, what is my polearm skill actually at? Oh, it's at, a, it's at 205. Okay. Yeah, it's not leveling up that fast because we don't have a huge amount in Vigor, I suppose. We only have, uh, I think it was 5 in Vigor or something like that. I mean, Martha isn't particularly a uh, combat focused character really you know she's she can do the job you know she can definitely do, do the job but she's not one of the you know not one of the most combat proficient characters i've had and you got to bear in mind that obviously in the future if she does end up dying we're going to take over our uh our husband i guess and i'm not sure what his skills are <laughs> all things considered that's the funny thing about that uh, I literally as I said to you before when I married him or when Martha married him shall we say he uh, he was unknown to me I, I didn't know him because of the fog of war because of the fog of war mechanic and they were basically like oh do you want to marry uh, this fellow his name is Urian and uh, yes he's a uh, he's a great great fellow indeed and that's basically what they told me and then I was like, oh, okay, yeah, um, I guess. I mean, uh, do you uh, do you know anything about him? And then they were like, oh, well, um, he's he's a he's a man, and um, he's from uh, our faction, and that's all the information I can give you. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> Which I find I, I find that quite funny actually, because in my opinion, I uh, you know. Maybe they should tell you a little bit something about him, you know, like he's renowned with the blade or he's a wonderfully good rider of horses or he's a layabout drunk who does nothing much. And uh, who knows? Uh, you, you know what I mean? It, it, I'm obviously not meaning exactly that, but, you know, I was just joking. Uh, but the point is something along those lines would actually be pretty fun. 
just to give a little bit of extra information and to give a little bit more immersion when you're doing those kinds of things. But obviously, it's a very minor, you know, a, well, I suppose to the developers, it's a very minor, um, you know, portion of the game, finding a spouse and getting married to them. And maybe they're not really prioritizing the sort of like the female um, process for that. Because from my perspective, I was actually not expecting it to be so incredibly simple. Because what we did was, well, I, I basically found, found someone who was not married, right? And you know how it is when you're playing a male character, right? You need to persuade the lady to accept your, your courtship. Which obviously is pretty difficult at times, you know. You do have to jump through a couple of hoops. You have to get your charm skill up. And then you have to get lucky with the persuasion minigame and everything. And with a female character, it's completely different. Where you literally have no, no persuasion minigame to do. You don't have to do the persuasion thing. However, I did speak to the clan leader. I spoke to the clan leader ahead of time. And I said, you know, do you have anyone that you know wants to marry to you know connect our clans forever more kind of thing so i did do it a little bit differently um but i did have to pay a significant amount of cash so maybe that's the trade-off not doing the persuasion minigame but instead i had to pay ninety thousand gold and on the flip side when you're a male character you literally pay like nothing you pay absolutely nothing at all you pay like what a thousand, two thousand, maybe four thousand um, total, and that's that's pretty crazy in itself. So I, there are definite uh, definite caveats for both uh, both methods of getting getting hitched. But um, yeah, from my perspective, it was so much easier for us to do it that way. And it would have been nice to have some information about our uh, you know prospective spouse ahead of time as Martha here. But anyway, we're just going to be taking every single person prisoner here. They seem to have uh, relatively bad personalities, actually. Most of them seem to be pretty annoyed about, um, well, pretty much everything that we're doing with them right here. So yeah, anyway, let's just move on. We'll take all of the loot, of course, and then we will be able to potentially besiege and finish the siege uh, because they have no walls, as you can quite clearly tell. And they are having four days worth of food remaining. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to end this episode off here. And we're going to finish this siege in the next one. I thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time.